Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Jessica Clements, a board certified psychiatrist, and this is Ask Dr. Jess TV, a station where you will be able to tune in and get everything you need to know about mental health and wellness. And this channel will be guided by you, so please stick along and make sure that you are part of this exciting journey. Now I'm back with Be Well, a conversation series that I started recently, and well, since the pandemic, we're all indoors, and so this is a special edition of Be Well at home. Now, this conversation series is all about you guys. My goal is to inspire you, to uplift you, but most importantly, to show you how easy and, and, and normal it should be to have conversations about mental health. And I've been able to do that with some pretty amazing guests, so make sure that you look in the description to find out how you can learn more about that and, and keep up with what, again, this journey will unfold to be. Now, before I get into introducing our guests, I do want to ask a few things. The first thing is to know that, yes, I'm a doctor, but I'm not your doctor, and no, I am not a doctor or a therapist to the guests that you are here, will hear from tonight and in general overall, so just keep that in mind. The second thing is look at the description and make sure that you look at some of the resources. Right. If you are in a town where you are looking for a mental health provider, my hope is that you will find a resource in the description that can help you in that process. All right. And as always with YouTube, make sure that you um, subscribe to my channel and set the notification so that you can know about every single video once it drops. OK, now with my guests, I've had an opportunity to get to know him a bit over the last couple of years. He's a really amazing person. We all know him because of his work that he's done out in the forefront as an actor. You've seen him on 90210. You've seen him on The Wire. You've heard his music. You know about his songwriting abilities as well. And well, he's also a new father. And so I want to welcome to Be Well, welcome another um, exciting guest to the series. And that's Mac Wilds. All right. Yo, yo. Hey, how it's are lit. you? Oh my God. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Um, that's actually going to be a, a deeper question I'm going to get into in just a moment. Uh, <laughs> but I, I want to orient everybody who's tuning in. Um, and first of all, just remind people that we are having a conversation with Mac Wilds today. I'm getting to have that, but this is not therapy, guys, and I'm not his doctor. We are just really doing our part to make sure that you know it's really important to talk about mental health and wellness. So that's the point Absolutely. of this conversation. So thank you so much. My hope was to have this conversation in person um, with you, but we're in a pandemic. Mine too. Exactly. We're in a pandemic. You know, and, and I'm working right now, so this actually works so much better. Wonderful, wonderful. Now look, I was saying in the beginning that I was gonna ask this because you know we, we often ask each other like, you know, how are you doing? And people just sort of say, I'm okay, I'm fine. But like with the pandemic and how much it's, it's really affected people's sort of mental health, how it's affected, you know, their daily lives, like genuinely, how are you? How have you been through this experience? Um, you know, I think, I think throughout the pandemic, it's been uh, ebbs and flows. Like it, there's been ups and downs. There's been um, there's been very very high ups and very very down, like lows. And, and uh, you know, with everything that was going on, not even just the pandemic. You know, everything going on within society, everything going on politically, um, family stuff always is is a big thing. And then. Uh, you know, the, the, the good and the bad that come with being a new father and uh, trying to balance work, fatherhood, and ultimately your relationship with your woman. Uh, I think all of those things start to come into play. But uh, if you were to ask me today, how am I doing on the eve of my daughter's birthday? Oh. Um, I'm good. I'm really, really good. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I've gone through the pain because this joy that I feel right now feels so much better. That is so wonderful hearing this. I think especially the way that you're able to like break down how that question is really like, it's important to spend some time with. And I, and I, I hear you on the ebbs and flows and then finding joy. Can you spend a moment on that? Like, what is it like for you as a new dad and, and, the eve of your baby girl's birthday and the joy, like, tell me what it feels like. I, the feeling is indescribable, man. Um, I, I, would, I would say, honestly, to, to go through this year um, with everything going on and to watch her grow, um, watch her as she develops into this world and she's, you know, 
all children are born innocent. Mm. You know, they, 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 there's nothing that they've done to this world and everything to them is so brand new. Watching her discover not only herself, but the world around her from from shoes to to my wallet. I don't know why she's already like, like always goes for my wallet. It doesn't make sense, but I feel like it'll make sense when she gets older. Um, Learning early. <laughs> early, very, very early. Um, no, man, it's, I think that's that's always been the, watching her this year has been the thing that's grounded me a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, every time that, you know, things seem to kind of get out of control or, you know, in my own head or whenever I feel any type of way. Um, if it's not a, you know, go out, take a drive and chill out, um, it's just sit back and watch her and really kind of just realize the innocence that's in her and, and watch her as she, you know, as she's growing into the 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 young woman that she, she will be. Oh, I love it. And we've had, we've enjoyed um, getting to see what you all have shared um, on social media and like to the public watching her. I mean, she's just beautiful. Um, I guess like as a father and a black father, and again, like you said in the beginning, the pandemic is definitely the the what's on everyone's mind. But you know, we we had a a, a really huge um, like social unrest in this you know in this country this year. Mm-hmm. So like, I guess as a father, I mean, what are some of the 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 thoughts that go through your mind as you are raising you know a young black daughter? Like, what are some of the thoughts that you're kind of thinking about about her future or about like what you even are or how you're showing up for her? Like, what are maybe a cu- a couple things that go through your mind? This year, especially, you know, I think I think it's always. Um, I think as of late, there's this is there's been this uh, new, uh, like buzz worthy term of you know protect our black women, mm-hmm. and you know I think I, I've always kind of grown up with that mindset of you know protecting my sisters, my mom, everybody like. But I never, I don't think I fully understood and realized. Uh, what that meant until, again, watching Tristan grow up mm. and understanding the, you know, talking to Christina and, and uh, all of the women around me. You know, I I think at first I was coming from just a, a mindset, mindset of, oh, as the man, I have to protect the women of my family by any means necessary, but not understanding what that means also within society, within the workforce, mm. within um the different spaces and places that black women live and thrive uh in all of these places uh you you you'll start to see that um as Malcolm X said the black woman is the most disrespected uh person on this earth mm. and uh, again i it's 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 understanding that i want Tristan to to kind of grow up and to be more to do more um, I, yeah, man, I, 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 I think I just had a, a stronger understanding of what it means to protect black women. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that says a lot. I mean, I, I've also heard that, that term a lot too. Um, I actually like took a photo in front of a big, like, I don't know what it was called, you know, in New York, how they have those like sticker placements is like a huge one in Italy, mm-hmm. protect black women. Um, so I hear you like as you navigate life raising this, you know, beautiful baby girl, Tristan, um, how more of that may come to play. But I will tell yeah. you, you know, I think she's really lucky to have, you know, both of you, mom and a dad, you know, her parents, you know, there for her as she grows and, you know, and we'll we'll all be excited to continue watching. Um, I for for the, you know, in the pandemic, a lot of people, a lot of industries have been affected. Um, you know, we know you, Mac is like actor, you know, singer, songwriter, you know, you're, you're, you're a music artist. Um, the industries, both of those industries have changed a lot. Like arguably, right. The music industry is sort of shut down in some ways. Mm -hmm. Like how, how did you sort of pivot with that? Like how, how did you sort of do that? And maybe share with me, like in the earlier parts, like if you were, how you were grappling with like, what, what's going to happen? Okay. Um, again, I think, I think the pandemic as a whole took us all by surprise. I was literally, I was on set one day. 
they said, okay, Mac, you have a week off and then we're supposed, we're probably going to come back, but they were talk. Some people are talking about a pandemic or something like that. So we might have to go into quarantine, but it won't bother us too much. We'll be right back on set. Mm -hmm. This was February. Uh, uh, everything got shut down, you know, once, once everything shut down and, you know, we, uh, we started to see how the numbers were starting to get higher and higher and then trying to realize, trying to, trying to look around all landscapes, be it music or acting, how people were um, coping with it. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew the answers. Nobody knew what to do. And, uh, so the one thing that I always knew how to do, um, no matter if I had a job or not, was just be creative. Mm. Um, so I, I just, I just continued to lean into my, in, into my uh, creative mind. And I started writing scripts. Um, I started learning how to draw. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I just, I, I like, I feel like my creativity, is, although, you know, I put it out for mass consumption, it's still something that I need to feed all the time uh, with inspiration and then put out something, you know, with what I'm being inspired by, whether it is, art that I'm watching, that I'm looking at, movies I'm watching, or even watching, up. I feel like I, I ingest a lot, so I have to make sure that I'm constantly putting stuff out. So mm. it came out in the scripts, et cetera, et cetera. But now we're back on set. Now we're able to, I mean, of course, with stipulations, COVID tests every day, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm back on set and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's still crazy. You know, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. It it isn't over. Yeah. Uh, I think people learned how to deal with it a little more, but it's uh, it's still very very real. I appreciate you saying that because I know you know I, I know there are people watching who may have mixed feelings about it, but I think it's important that you emphasize that we are still in it. I appreciate that. Yeah. I want to yeah. take a moment back to what you said. I was like, mm, like I was in church, like mm, when you said like how you the creativity part that you leaned into that, like, is that something that you sort of naturally like found that that's your, your, your respite. That's what you go to when things are hard. Or is it something that like 2020, the pandemic has taught you like that this is what you need to do to keep yourself in a good space. It's so always been like, it's always been a good resting spot for me. Uh, like a, it's always been like a, a good, like a safe haven, just mm -hmm. being able to, whether, it was before being able to jump into a studio, even if I'm not recording anything, to listen to music, to mm -hmm. listen to new music, to hear stuff just loud around me and get start to get ideas. Um, there's always, I always have to either be taking in something creative or putting out something creative for me to feel fulfilled, uh, I've, I've realized. Uh, and, and again, I, I, I say creative specifically because I don't see really any bounds to my creativity. Like now I'm I'm writing scripts and I'm I want to direct. Like uh besides that, you know, I may do like I may paint soon. I may uh draw soon. Like there's I've always loved to be able to I loved creating and I love learning new forms of creativity and mm -hmm. uh seeing how that moves me. So um it's it's not as simple as just being an actor or a singer. Uh, it's it's really just just being able to create as much as I possibly can. That's powerful, and you know I've I've also told people because in the beginning, you know, I would like do these Zoom like mental health. Um, sort I remember, of, I remember, yeah, yeah. I would kind of like do that, and I I found that some people who are in like entertainment, whether they are themselves the creators or they're a part of like helping to bring it forward. Some of them were saying things like, oh, I don't feel like, you know, I, my industry is as big as a deal. And I wanted to, I stopped them. I said, let me tell you, we're all at home right now and you all are keeping <laughs> us like, you know, level. Like I, you know, so, so, so it, it goes to show you that like every industry is playing a role in sort of how we, we function in life. So I salute and appreciate creative people because it really has gotten me through as well. Like there have been times when I needed a good Netflix movie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know? Exactly. It's exactly. a lot. It's a lot. Do you have advice for creatives who also may be like trying to figure things out or even maybe stuck? Like, you know, any advice to someone out there who's, who's maybe struggling with 
not having their industry come back the way that they were expecting it by now? Yeah, man. Um, How to cope? I, I think I think the biggest thing I can tell any creative, uh, if if you are in if you're in the music business, I, I would tell you right now is the time that you start to hone your craft. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to you need to build your craft because when it comes back is gonna come back very hard, and I feel like a lot of people are gonna be trying to find their footing, like trying to get back in certain places and certain zones, and because it's gonna be such an influx of music, uh, tours, the, the whole nine yards. Right now is the time that you hone your craft to be the best you can be so that when that time comes for you to work, you can outwork everybody else. Mm. Um, and uh, any creative, this is for all creatives out there. I know a lot of times we get uh, caught up in, in, I guess, especially right now, right? It's say, you know, there's not many ways that we can kind of go out and get inspiration mm-hmm. as before. I know a lot of people would love to go to like museums or just go out and see life uh, as it moves. But uh, I, I just got finished reading this book. Um, it is called, uh, part of my French is called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. All right, I'll and, it. Yeah. Um, and there's a, there's a part of that book that talks about about uh, being inspired to work, mm-hmm. um, that it is really a circle, right? You know, it's it's a inspiration, action, um, and then product, right? And it, and it constant, that's the circle. Like you, people need to move in that circle. But a lot of people forget that it is a circle. You know, people think of it as a straight line, that this is the way it's supposed to work, when in actuality, it's a circle. No matter where you start, you'll always find where you need to go. So whether you're just writing every day just to get something out, you'll get inspired and that'll cause you to do something. Like mm. you have to, or you have a bunch of music and you're like, ah, I don't want to put it out right now. I don't feel like it. Unload the clip. Cause <laughs> that, the, 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 the what people are going to be talking about will inspire you to, to get back into writing and doing something. So just remember that it's a circle. And it's not a straight line. Like, you don't necessarily have to be inspired. You don't necessarily have to start working first. And you don't have to put out your music right now. But just keep working. I love you know, that. Just, yeah. I love that. I love that. And I think it also, it translates to other areas of life, too. Mm-hmm. You know, like this whole thing of getting started and knowing that it can maybe even kickstart you to continue whatever that process was. Exactly. Oh, I love it. I love it. I mean, it also reminds me of like in office, if I'm like with a patient and I'm trying to help them with their depression, I'm like, get started, like get, get up, let's get a plan with like, how are you going to, sh- you're going to shower, you're going to yep. make some breakfast, you're going to drink a cup of coffee or tea, you know, and, and that sort of get them out of that loop um, is something I try to work with on them. Uh, yep. Along those lines, mental health lines, um, Do you have any thoughts about like mental health, like therapy, any sort of reaction to it? Yeah, love to. Absolutely, I love. I think uh, I love. I understand. I understand a lot of people are afraid of therapy, but uh, as somebody who does go to therapy, Mm -hmm. um, I think it's. I think it's very necessary to to have someone, not just a friend or a family or, or or someone of that nature to to speak to, but to actually contextualize your feelings, the, the, what's going on in your head. Um, Cause a lot of times we don't have the words. We know what we feel, we know how it's, what's going on. Like we can tell you all of that, but there's not a lot of times that somebody could, uh, again, help you break that cycle or help you kind of uh, guide you in, in necessary, uh, necessary pathways to being a better you, mm-hmm. however you want to be better. Mhm. Mhm. Absolutely. I mean, first of all, the fact that you shared um that you also are in therapy. I hope that encourages, you know, people <laughs> watching. I mean, cuz I I think, you know, people really try to make it seem like men, black men, like do not do anything with feelings. And I think I don't think it's true. I think it's an issue with lack of access. Like people don't have access to therapists. They don't feel comfortable with the therapists they do have access to. They don't have the finances for it. Um, 
why do you think people still say that? Like, is it true? Is it is it some level of truth to why people think black men don't aren't in touch with their feelings or? Um, I think I think there's I think there's even though mental health is now uh, more of uh, more accepted and more um, commonplace when it comes to conversations that people have. Um, I think there's still a very strong stigma that black men kind of uh, have, and not even just have, but also that they that they're put through, that they're that that are, that's pushed on them, mm-hmm. you know, to be overly strong, to to be, uh, you know, to to hold it down, and you know, uh, you know, you gotta et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. But um, I, for any black man out there. And I, and I mean anyone, everyone, like every single one of you guys, we've all gone through life. We've all gone through traumatic experiences. There, we've seen things that we a lot of times shouldn't have to see and, and just be cool with. We've gone through things that a lot of times people tell us to bottle up and put to the side and, you know, mm-hmm. be a man and hold it down. But uh, you're human. Mm-hmm. You're human and you deserve to have the, all of that stuff unpacked and understood. You deserve to be seen. You deserve to be felt. You deserve to be seen, heard, and understood. Simple as that. I respect that so much. And I think it also, what, what people re- should realize from what you shared, it also opens up opportunities to have you know, really deeply meaningful relationships and connections with people. You know, it can kind of just bring you to a place where you really feel good with who you are. Like you, like what you said, I'm not going to repeat it because it was so beautiful. Um, and there does not need repetition, but absolutely. I think that's another piece that I've seen. And I thank you for sharing that with, um, with all of, of us. Course. I think it's again, really important for people to think about it. Now, let me ask you, are you, you know, how people use the term like check on your strong friend. Mm-hmm. Are you the strong friend or are you, Oh are, yeah, you are. Okay. I'm 200% the strong friend. I'm the guy. I'm the guy that everybody like comes to check. Like, never anybody has a problem. I'm the guy that everybody's coming to to talk to. Mm. Yeah. So how how can people show up for you? Like, what are some ways? And maybe not. Maybe this can be advice that you could share for like, as a strong friend. <laughs> like, break it down. What are, what do strong friends really need? Outside Man, of like, that's... yeah. Like, tell me what you think about that. That's a really good question. Um, man, uh, you know what? I think, I think just as simple, it's, it could be as simple as, a. am checking in on you, man. And it could be as big as, it could be something as dope as like, I don't know, just, just things to show that you're thinking about somebody, mm-hmm. uh, checking on not only their mental health, but them, uh, their their well-being, you know. Um, a lot of times, you know, people all, people will only reach out when they need something. Mm-hmm. But there's there is something to reaching out just because, you know. And I, I think that definitely goes a long way. I, I do it to my friends sporadically all the time. Like I'll reach out and just be like, "Yo, I'm just I'm literally just checking in on you, like making sure you're good. I really didn't want anything. I'm literally just checking on you." And see, you know what? I noticed with strong people, because I, I think I'm the strong friend too. We are mm-hmm. so good at knowing how to get in touch with people and make sure they're good. But when that awesome. question is flipped, if you had to ask me, I, I probably really wouldn't know. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, I guess I'm good. <laughs> right? I know, but I think it speaks to just like what you were saying earlier, even about some of the like beliefs that people have about Black men and like even some of the like uh, ways that we carry ourselves because of the the stereotypes that's the word i'm trying to say yeah. that we um, sometimes it's like we take that in and it, and we sort of believe it's true too like i think as a strong person i identify as that as well like i people come to me for help like my friends and then when you know i sometimes i don't know how to ask for help when i need it or i don't even know what i want people to do to make me feel like i'm seen exactly exactly <laughs> um I, yeah, I, I I suffer from that a lot, like a lot, man. Just just really like being not I don't want to say afraid, but 
being too apprehensive mm-hmm. to, to reach out when I need help. Like I've, a lot of times I'll go on my head and I'll be like, man, I made it this far without help. I don't like, unless somebody's saying that they want to help out, like outwardly, I'm not going to reach out for help. Like I, I can, I can get through this by myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that, honestly, that's kind of what led me to therapy. Um, just trying to get through it myself and, and not fully understanding what that means. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually sitting, you know, it, it made me want to get on like a, I'm like I need to talk to somebody, um, and I and I know it's not it's not like I can talk to my friends. It's not like you know I don't. I, I, my friends will always be biased. My friends will always have my side, um, and I need somebody who's not always going to be by my side. By on my side, I need somebody who will just really understand. Okay, this is what happened. You could have did this better. You did really well. We really like this. You need to th- like focusing on other things, keeping mm-hmm. my spirits up. That's what I really needed. And uh, yeah, man. Woo. Shout out to my therapist. Oh yeah, shout out to your <laughs> therapist. I love it. I shout mine out too. I mean, that's important. I think, and I think you're touching on something. It's like even you know when people are, they may not know right away like that they could benefit from like talking to like a professional mm-hmm. but it's sometimes when we are not able to answer those questions ourselves or we just keep running into the same challenge that that's where therapy can really be helpful so Absolutely. congratulations on your journey i think it's 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 amazing it's amazing i definitely i tell everyone i wouldn't even be dr jess without therapy it started <laughs> because i went to therapy i was like oh what am i doing i'm gonna st- are you kidding me um Okay, so I I, want to kind of uh, think a bit about sort of like your community, your people in your life. Like, you know, at the start of the pandemic, a a lot of people were struggling, (laughs) mental health challenges, substances. Like I had people come in and say, oh, yeah, I was drinking bottles of wine, you know, downing them in a couple of nights, smoking a lot of weed. People were really sharing this with me um, in office. How do you sort of like, with with social distancing, how are you staying connected with your community and making sure that you all are checking in on like mental health? Like, is that something you all are doing? No, I think it. I think it definitely is. Uh, Christina is a. Uh, Christina is a. I, I want. I can't say a nature freak. I'll say that Christina is an adventure freak. So. <laughs> so literally, Shout out like to Christina. By the way. <laughs> Shout out to Christina. Uh, almost every week, like once a week, maybe like if we miss a week, we have to do something big for the for like to catch up. Um, but like once a week, we'll do something like we'll go out somewhere. We'll go to like a mountainside, you know, just to take pictures and look at land and all of that stuff. Or uh, this weekend, we're supposed to be going, uh, I think there's this big spot in Virginia out here um, that they set up like a block long of Christmas lights and we're just gonna drive through us and the baby. Um, So yeah, like every week we have to, we try to like do something where we're going out, you know, we're staying, social even within our own means like within us as a family Mm -hmm. uh and not just being cooped up in the house Mm -hmm. uh like a a couple of weeks ago her her uh her mom and her brother came down we went pumpkin picking nobody mind you nobody picked a pumpkin but we just went pumpkin (laughs) we were like you know some of these pumpkins are fly and we just we didn't know what to do with them afterwards so we just you know yeah i could eat pumpkin seeds I, you know what, I, I love to hear that because I also think that's another important piece. Black folks, we do nature. Like I need yes. people to know that. Yes, I absolutely. I love that. Also, you all have just absolutely. inspired me because I was also, you know, I follow along. I follow y'all on social media and I'm like, how are you all like finding these places? It's it's so inspiring to watch for sure. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank it you. It is, it is. And I would encourage people to, y'all take Max um advice and and what he's showing you like get out in nature take those nature walks it, it can be so like just relaxing oh absolutely calming it, it it definitely changes any mood that you had like there's uh, i think that's a place when you actually get out into nature that's a place that you can actually 
get out that energy. I, I've always been a very strong believer that, you know, you, if you stay in the house and you have a certain energy, the energy only moves from one place to the next. It never dissipates. It literally just moves from one place to the next. Mm. Um, so if you have it, she'll have it. The baby will have it. It'll be all bad. Mm. But <laughs> once you get out into nature, uh, you can actually start to push it out into into nature. It, it starts to naturally change, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. So I, but that's another way for anybody to kind of get out of their own head. I love that. And I, again, I'm I'm just feel like I'm just praising you left to right, but I really am because this is like real life examples and you're doing the work by, by you know, being in therapy as well of like how people can really, really cope. And I even mm -hmm. love what you just shared. And it made me think about my own life and like, I'm like, you're right. I actually need to get out a bit more because you can't, you know, take on other people's stress and their feelings as well. Like what you're describing, if you're indoors, stress is affecting everyone, the babies and getting out. Mm -hmm. I, I no lie. I feel so much better sometimes. Even like I got caught in the snow the other day. But, you know, I felt great coming back in and maybe it was just recharging. And Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. OK, so we're going to shift a little bit to like one of my favorite parts of the talk. And that's like where we can all get uplifted and inspired. We already have been. Thank you so much for you know everything so far. Um, but it's so important for people to have hope because like hopelessness, it, it can be a, a symptom of depression. And, 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 you know, it can also lead people like down some really difficult um, you know, just paths. So again, I want to encourage people to look at the description to like get some resources to look for help, but it's so important to stay uplifted and encouraged. And so I had a few questions about this, um, on Instagram to you. Someone wanted to know, like, what is like your main source of inspiration? How do you stay inspired? Uh, my main source of inspiration as of right now, it's Tristan. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, watching her grow up and 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 me wanting to impart everything that I have inside of me into her. Like I want to, I I I can't wait till she's able to to fully understand certain movies. Like I can't wait till we sit down and watch Little Rascals. We sit down and watch you know certain movies that I'm that that I that live so near and dear to my heart. Um, let her hear certain music and and break down harmonies and okay you hear how he did this he, he moved it did, like you hear that move right there that was crazy uh, <laughs> I, 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 it's those things that i really i really 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 can't wait for um so that keeps me inspired you know i want I want i want to make sure that especially me as a creative that in the lexicon of things mm -hmm. that i will uh, eventually put like uh give Tristan uh, or show Tristan uh, the things that, that have inspired her father, the things that her father loves, that a lot of my own stuff, my own movies, my own television shows, my own music um, is in there and she, and it, and it makes sense with everything. So, yeah. Oh, we'd love to see it. You know, we cannot wait to continue to see how your journey will like continue to unfold. And I yeah. love when I'm watching something, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I love when I put you on 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 a movie and all that stuff. So, um, and you also you shared recently you wrote a song, right? Inspired by mm -hmm. about your daughter, about Tristan, and shared the beautiful video. And yeah, man. Uh, so we did a we did home vacation. Actually, I wrote home for me and uh, James Fontler wrote home vacation years ago, mm -hmm. and for some reason, of course, only God knows, it was. Uh, we just never released it. Salam had it sitting in the, in the computer for a long time, and you know something I would throw on every now and then just to listen to in the house. Uh, but during the pandemic, Salam, I guess Salam re-listened to it and he called me out of the blue like one night. He said, "Hey, listen to Home Vacation again." I was like, "What?" I was like, "I listen to that all the time." He said, "No, I want you to listen to it and think about the life that you have right now. Wow. So I want you to listen to it and just think about." everything that's going on in the life that you're in right now. And I said, okay. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, Salam will say something and I'm hard headed naturally. Like I'm very stubborn. Um, I'll be like, all right, I'm gonna get to it. Waited a little while, like waited a day, two days, three days, 
kept on asking me every day, did you listen to it? Nah, I'm going to get to it. Did you listen to it? Nah, I'm going to get to it. Finally, like one Sunday night, Tristan sleep, uh, Christina sleep. I put it on and I'm like, all right, let me see what he's talking about. There's nothing changed in this. And I press play and it illustrated like the words that we wrote before that had a different meaning now have a whole completely different meaning. Wow. And it was just like, I called him on Monday. I said, so what are we doing? <laughs> it was that simple. Well, it was beautiful. And even the, even the title thinking about we're all spending so much time at home. I've even sort of re kind of, you know, created this at home version of be well. And it's like home vacation. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a way that we can look at the time we're spending at home to, to be something that is enjoyable. And so exactly. I, I think it's so beautiful and hearing that story too, how it, how it met even more to you in a different way is it's, it's really beautiful. Yeah. It is. yeah. Shout out Salon for that, man. Yeah. Um, in terms of like the future, uh, you know, I do hope that one day we will get out of this. I, I'm, I'm hopeful, you know, they're talking about vaccination and all that stuff. We don't have to go into views on mm -hmm. it right now. But um, I, I do wonder, like, what's something that you look forward to? Um, is there anything from the pandemic that you're going to carry with you um, that you maybe learned? I, I think uh, one of the biggest things that I'm going to carry with me is uh, spending more time with Christina and the baby. Mm. Uh, I, I, there's something about spending time at home. There's something about, um, like that was like, that was, that was one of the saving graces for, of the pandemic, you know, win or lose good or bad at the end of the day, you know, I get a chance to wake up and see those two every day. Mm. Um, and there's, I, yeah, I don't think there's, there's nothing really like that. Um, but something that I do miss, uh, again, I'm a music head and I, I love art. So I love, I miss, I miss going to museums and feeling safe. I miss, I miss concerts. Uh, I, I miss like just all of like the live version of art that I can actually go out and see and feel mm -hmm. and uh, experience. I, I miss that. Um, television and everything is cool, but uh, you know, I can't wait till I can go to the theater and watch something again. Like, and not just the movie theater, like the actual theater. Like I want to see bodies on stages. Like I, I can't. I'm, I'm, I miss that. I'm here with you. I'm here with you. And also the piece around family and feeling, you know, lucky and and to 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 be able to share it with with Christina and you know and Tristan. I hope people yeah. also walk away with that too. Um, yeah, me too. Final couple of questions. Affirmations, this is something I really encourage people. There's some like, you know, like benefits potentially with, with sort of coming up with a mantra, a statement, like a philosophy mm -hmm. that you sort of reflect on. I use life is good. This is something my mother had said like a long time ago. And I feel like it helped to kind of keep me focused. And I just would say it. Um, I know you also share a lot of really dope quotes um, on Instagram and I'm always like screenshotting them and saving them. So do you have like an affirmation or like a favorite quote or something that you sort of go back to, to, to bring you back have, to the place? I have so many, I have so many and I, and I use them for different, for different reasons. Um, I have one on my arm. It says, uh, it says nobody cares. Try harder. Mm. Um, and it's because a lot of times I think we get caught up in, we get caught up in trying to do stuff for other people. Oh, I'm doing this album because I want to make this person happy. Or, oh, I'm working like this because I want to, it's like, none of that matters. You work harder because you want to work harder. Um, that's one. And then um, another good one trying to think again I'm going through I'm going through my uh my memory banks there's like so many uh dang hold on I think I have one on the wall hold on you do okay <laughs> and also as you all are watching uh, please share your affirmations in the comments too uh, it's uh it's it's very simple um and this is more of an affirmation than a quote. Okay. Um, just something that I something that I, I read every day uh, as I'm going into the world. It says it says today today I will I will create. Well, 
Today, wherever I go, I will create a peaceful, loving, and joyful world. Um, again, we never we never know what people are going through. We never know we never know what uh, the people around us uh, are going through in their everyday lives. So it's up to us every day to just create the like the have the like to push peace, mm. love, and joy into the world around us. I think that I think a lot of people get caught up in their own everyday situations. A lot of people don't think about other people. Mm. And I think the the more that we start to think about each other as people, the better off we'll be as people. Mac, I think that's a beautiful way to wrap tonight's conversation. <laughs> I mean, that I, I think it's timely. And I, 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 I need that quote. I'm going to need you to put that on your Instagram stories this week so I can make sure to screenshot it. Gotcha. That is a way gotcha. to go. Any final thoughts? Um, you know, we, we've talked about a lot of really great things. I know you're helping a lot of people to get comfortable mm -hmm. with talking about mental health and, and sort of recognizing it's important. Any final thoughts or encouraging words you want to give people? We've already done a lot, but anything? Yeah, man. Uh, for for black for my black women out there, um, you are raised to be strong. Uh, a lot of times stronger than you want to be. Mm. Um, and uh, I think you have earned every right to be, you have earned every right to be as soft as you want to be as well. Mm. I think women, especially black women, should be akin to water. Mm. Uh, water is, the softest element in the world, but also can be the strongest element in the world mm. if pressurized the right way. Um, I want I, again, so I I implore Black women to to reconnect with their soft side. Uh, you know, fuck being strong for them. Fuck being strong for the world. Use this time to like to to just you know you can be soft and still be strong. It's possible. You are not a monolith. Mm -hmm. Um, and for black men, uh, I'll say the same thing. You know, I think, I think a lot of times we look at, we look at strength and, you know, we think like, uh, we can't cry and uh, we can't do this and whatever, whatever. There's so much more strength in understanding, mm -hmm. uh, who you are. And that means all around. I'm talking about like, not just knowing what type of sneakers you like or what type of food you like, but understanding, you know, some things make me cry. Understanding like, okay, I know I can't really touch on certain situations because of what it'll do to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then not even being, a, and then being not afraid to touch on certain things because it doesn't make you, it doesn't make you any, like a man is gonna be a man whether he cries or not, like you're mm -hmm. a man. Um, and actually understanding yourself makes you more of a man. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that those will be uh, final words. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I mean, I think you have shared so much and these last two gems that you shared for, for black women and black men, I think really touches on different narratives that we need to hear. We need black women to be able to, to tap into that softness, like you said, and we need black men to be able to tap into their emotions and know that they both are still, you know, who they are. Um, outside of yep. these narratives. So I really appreciate it. And again, I think it means a lot coming from you. Um, so thank you. I don't want to keep you away from your family anymore <laughs> uh, tonight. Um, and, you know, wishing Tristan a happy birthday um, on the eve of her birthday. And thank you. Yeah. And I guess people can obviously visit and, you know, your fans can continue to follow along with you on social media. I know the podcast is a way for people to kind of keep yes. hearing from you. Yes. Um, absolutely. All right. Anything? Make sure you guys uh, check out Guys Next Door. Make sure you guys check out, um, yeah, everything that we're doing, man. Uh, man, come here. I know you want to, Jesus. Oh, oh my goodness. We got a little. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you got a lot to say, huh? It sounded like you said <laughs> my name. I'm pretty sure it sounded like you said that. <laughs> oh, Tristan. Well, happy early birthday to you.
Say thank you. Say thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, that's our good cue. Thank you so much, Mac. I really appreciate you for being a part of this conversation and joining the Be Well. No problem. We, we really appreciate you. Of course. Of course. All right. All right. Bye. Um, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, this conversation series is all about you. Please engage in the comments. Tell me who else you want me to talk to in the Be Well Conversation series. Be sure that you check out everything that Mac Wilds has going on. You already know where to follow him, but I've got his information in the description. And I just want to remind everyone out there, if you need help, it's okay to seek help. No, there is nothing wrong with asking for help if you need it. And to remind you, you are not your pain, you are love. Be well.